We're back with the Breakfast in Post TV Africa. Let's quickly talk about, you know, the finance sector. The Central Bank of Nigeria, that's the CBN, said that the fresh cash withdrawal limits uh, recently announced would lead to a further drop in incidents of electronic payments, uh, that's e-payment fraud, in the country. Well, the argument is that cyber criminals, after hacking bank customers' accounts, usually go to automated teller machines, the ATMs, at Unholy R to withdraw stolen funds, setting that the implementation of the new cash withdrawal limits will uh, deter such fraud stars and fraudulent activities. In its bid to ensure successful implementation of its Naira redesigned policy, it's, which is aimed at replace, replacing current 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira denomination with a newly designed ones, the CBN had said, which he said on December the 6th, announced that the maximum cash withdrawal over the counter by individuals and corporate organization per week, with effect from January the 9th, 2023, will be 100,000. Thousand hour and five hundred thousand hour, respectively, stating that withdrawals above uh, this limit will attract processing fees of five percent and ten percent, respectively. What well, also reports that says that the incident of fraud in payment system declined by thirty percent to thirty five in 2022 as a result of the various incentives and systems that the central bank of Nigeria has put in place to checkmate fraud stars. The Apex Bank also expects that the new cash withdrawal limit will push more members of the public to embrace e-payment. A development, he said, would uh, tame cyber criminals to want to target more victims. Well, that's it. Uh, let's have our guest join us this morning. Muktak Mohammed, he's a financial analyst, who joins us right here in Lagos via Zoom. Muktak, it's good to have you join us. Compliment of the season. Compliment of the season. Actually, joining you from Kaduna today, not from Lagos. Oh, well, that's that's fine. It's good to know. Uh, so, quickly, do you agree with the uh, you know the thoughts of the Central Bank of Nigeria that this would actually help to reduce uh, you know cyber crime and criminal activities? So I agree with that. I you know in your last program, I think I I, I talked about that. I think um, that's the only um, beauty about the policy. Um, especially with the POS terminals, because nobody's looking at that. Everybody's just looking at the business type of it. They are not looking at the fraudulent type of it. Like the CBN said, and it's happened to a lot of people that I know, when these fraudulent activities are committed through the bank, they are withdrawn through the POS terminal, not just the ATM, especially the POS terminal. I think for me, um, it's, 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 it's just one of the good decisions that, that they took as regards the security. But then, I still have my fears in terms of uh, other issues, but for the fraudulent activity, I think definitely it might help. But that does not mean that um, everybody that goes to withdraw the uh, money during the POS ties in a, a, a withdraw it during an, an holy hour. They need to come up with strategy like what they are planning to do. If you have to withdraw above a certain limit, I think they should put those conditions for them to meet. All right, uh, Mukhtar. Uh... What, what sort of fraudulent transactions uh, is, is the Central Bank of Nigeria referring to? I mean, because uh, it, it's we have a lot of you know fraudulent transactions. Um, are we just talking about e-fraud alone? Uh, um, are we talking about other forms of, of fraudulent activities that uh, you think this uh, this new cash withdrawal limit policy will will affect? You know, what 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 are we looking at here? Yes, I didn't get that question. I think the network is. Um, oh, all right. Uh, apologies for that. Yes. So, so um, when the, when the Central Bank of Nigeria says that a cash withdrawal policy, uh, limit policy will curb fraud, electronic fraud, what are we looking at here? Um, you know, because we know about. Uh, uh, I think uh, for me, when they say Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo they is, it, is it hush puppy style? You know, people have uh, criticized it. So, come again, Mukta. Sorry about that. Yeah, just trying to give other advantage to think of the cash withdrawal uh, policy for me, because people have criticized this uh, withdrawal policy. It's part of the advantage, but it's not all about it, because it's not that for the length activities will not happen. So what the CBN should always know is that the first are always trying to go, uh, when they come out with policy, they try to do something to beat it up. Just like we heard this morning that they had the counterfeit 1,000 notes. 
just um, not even up to a, a, a week after the, 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 the redesigning note comes out. And this was what the CBN told us this was about to achieve to make sure that they are not able to counterfeit most of this note. So definitely it will help, but that doesn't mean the CBN should just put it at that because the first stars are also working to improve on their own technology to beat what the CBN has. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, uh, is it wire, wire fraud, you know, uh, I don't know, is it uh, the style, the, the uh, uh, hush puppy style fraud, is it uh, Yahoo Yahoo or what, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you know, what, what comes to mind is, is mostly maybe money laundering is what I would have thought the CBN was, um, would have looked at more. Um, so you're saying that, that criminals in terms of the e-fraud will find uh, a way around this. And you've talked about, for instance, what we've seen this morning over the weekend, uh, Naira notes, uh, 1,000 Naira, so, you know, being uh, uh, counterfeited. Um, uh, we, we hear that, that POS operators are, are still adamant, you know, that this uh, is going to affect them negatively. Um, some will say, well, we should look to a cost-benefit analysis, that the benefits of this outweigh the cost, you know, of uh, losing some jobs and all that. Uh, the CBN has said that they have nothing to fear, but they're still crying. I mean, in today's papers on the front pages, we had at least one paper uh, giving coverage to that. So w what do you say to this uh, side of the argument, which the CBN probably is trying to justify by looking at the benefits? What do you say to that side of the argument about the loss of I think um, that, side of the argument, that side of the argument is still okay, but we need to also um, look at the larger picture because um, uh, the POS terminal also have created job. And especially in an economy that we are now, that um, job creation is becoming like rocket science. So definitely, I think they have a point, but that does not negate the fact that um, the right thing has to do. Because when you are talking about fraudulent activities, your report just told us that CBNC they were able to reduce it by 22%. Even with that, there are a lot of fraudulent activities. And moreover, most of the people that are affected by these fraudulent activities for POS are mostly those vulnerable Nigerians, those that are in, in the in the rural area. So the CBN has to do everything to protect their, their, those people because they are definitely the poor of the poor. So the, as the POS um, operators, I thought what they should be discussing with the CBN is how they can improve security, how they can come up with strategy to reduce these um, challenges that they normally have. So for me, I don't think it's just all about the job, all about the threat, but they need to look at the larger picture. How can we improve our services? Because in Nigeria, we just think of profit. We don't think about of services and we don't think about security. I think the CBN is looking at the services they are going to render and the security of people funds. And that is the, that's part of the uh, um, responsibility that has been put upon for the CBN. So for me, I think um, we look at that, but again, we need to improve the security and the POS terminals sh uh, operators should be looking at talking to the CBN on how to improve uh, uh, security. After all, the, what they are trying, it was the CBN that came up with the idea of having a POS and terminal, especially in the rural area for financial inclusion. So apart from electronic fraud that has been stated by the Central Bank of Nigeria, let's also look at, you know, the issue of kidnappers. I mean, we know that that has, that seemed to be a lucrative business in Nigeria, uh, where ransom has been asked for. Do you also think that this tackles the issue of, you know, kidnapping and looting by government officials? Putting my government officials, I, I don't know how that will work, but I mean, it might work because government officials would definitely want to use one or two chronics to get those deals. I think that is where the, um, the banks has, I mean, they are, we have been told to report any transaction at, at above a limit is there in the Money Laundry Act. So I think that should still be handled uh, by the bank. Um, the other aspect of um, um, the, the, the kidnappers, I'm actually in the, in the northeast, like I said, and in, in, I'm in Kaduna, to be precise. And I see the joy that the, the citizens, I mean, the, the, the people of Kaduna are having with this that is going to reduce the amount of kidnapping and banditry that has been happening around here. Because most of this banditry, money is given to them in cash. And they even said that most of those bandits are even now, they are, they, are, they, are, they are in a panic mood because some of them still have this liquidity in high amounts. They don't know how to bring it back to exchange it for the for the for the new Naira note. So definitely, it's going to help security. I have to say that initially, when the CBN came with this policy, I said it that the policy is both an economy and security policy. 
So definitely, it's going to help, especially knowing fully well that kidnappers normally don't their transaction by cash. But again, that puts the victims at risk because it's now in the order of the victim to want to meet the demands of the kidnappers. So I think they, 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 it's, it's not a win-win situation as it is now because the victim family will want to look for every available means to, really, to get their, 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 their people out of the kidnapper down. And the CBN and the security agencies will want to protect. So definitely it's not going to be a win-win situation unless the security apparatus are up to their game using that as a, as, as, as a means of arresting the kidnappers, telling you, okay, we give you this phone, but we have to we have to know how this phone is going to move. We are going to position our people so that when they come to collect it, we'll be able to strike. It's not going to be just the CBN. The security people also have to up their game. All right. Um, the CBN has said that uh, they experienced a 35% decline in electronic fraud, uh, you know, as they increased uh, cashless transactions in the country. But, I mean, if, like you said, if these guys want to make their money, they wouldn't mind looking for new ways to, to defraud people. Uh, the CBN is also saying that uh, most of these uh, people who con commit fraud online, we, we draw the monies from ATMs between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. to draw a whole lot of money. So if they place this limit, it will be half for them to withdraw. But I mean, well, can they, they go the next day? They would go. They would look for another way to take the money. <laughs> I mean, so I don't, that's why I was asking you because I mean, some of these things you hear from these officials, you wonder what, what exactly you know uh, they, they're driving. But Mukhtar, thank See, you very it, much. It came, it, even in Lagos, okay. even in Lagos, it came a point that the one chance people were using POS to, uh, to 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 rob people. Even the security apparatus, to some of people that reported security apparatus leading them to ATM machine to withdraw money to give to them. So. Definitely, it's all about both security and economy. They need to come together and find but, a way. But, but if I commit fraud online and I, I want to withdraw the money and I realize I can't withdraw, I mean, won't I find other ways to, you know, to, to keep the money in another The account? only way that you cannot withdraw the money is if the, if, if, the, if the person that is involved has reported the matter to the bank and the bank blocked that account. As long as that account is not blocked, you find a way to even transfer it to another account. Remember that some of the issues the EFCC have tackled is multiple transfer. You transfer from A to B, B to C, C to D, and those transfer just keep moving from one account to the other. I can just go so, to, into a supermarket and buy everything. <laughs> no, <laughs> take we, we, I take mean, the goods outside, <laughs> go and sell them on the black market. So, so, so the thing is, if we further look at this you know, ideology and uh, argument that's been put out, uh, you would say, uh, because you have defrauded someone of so much, let's say it's one million naira, and then you can't take out one million instantly from the ATM or the POS. But you also have the option of, you know, making transfers. Uh, I really don't know if there's a lot of limit or if there's, you know, limit on how much you can transfer depending on the kind of accounts that you're operating. But also, we also so stop this, you know, fraud stars from taking time. It could also just be, you know what, let's take it easy and spread this money in different times. So I, I, I just take my time and withdraw it within a week and I get the money. Or maybe two weeks. In developed, in, in developed economy in the world, when I do a transaction, no matter how much transaction I do, it stays in my account for like a day or two before it's transferred to the individual account because of fraud leg activity. Like, so if after a day or two there's no complaint, then it will be transferred. I think what, the, the, what we need to do in this case is that the cash withdrawal limit will reduce that. But again, it has to be the account owner complaining to the bank. And sometimes the bank will not tell that you need to get a police report. And in the process of going through all this bureaucracy, the, 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 the scammers are through right. the attacks because right. I have issues like that. All right. Mokta, thank you very much. I wonder if the policemen who follow Nigerians to ATM to, to force them at gunpoint to withdraw monies in, um, and pay them bribes on the road. Will, will, it will deter them. I'm sure it will still continue. <laughs> it will still continue. Mokta, thank you very much for your time. He joins us live via Zoom uh, from Kaduna. Uh, appreciate your time, Mokta Mohammed, financial analyst. Thank you. All right. Appreciate them. Uh, it was once a policeman, you know, I did a, a wrong, you know, I didn't see him saying stop at traffic. You know, in front of my one police station, notorious in Port Harcourt, so I drove. I was naive at the time I was doing the city. They forced me to pay money from ATM. But why yeah. didn't you refuse? Yeah. Oh, then it was, I was much younger. I was much <laughs> younger. We have to go. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Kofi Bartels. 
and I am Messia Bopo. It's fine to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Have a fantastic day.